Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, bless his name. Bless his name. There is significance to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As we dig a little bit deeper in our text, listen, I want to highlight two grave sites that many people look, but don't find Jesus. Um, the first grave site that a lot of people look, but don't find Jesus is religion without relationship. May I suggest to you that religion without a relationship is a grave where God does not dwell. A lot of people are going to religion trying to find God that if they participate in religious activities and rituals and programs that perhaps they may find God in their religious activities. But can I tell you, God is not in religion apart from relationship. Listen, a lot of people go to church and they sit into the congregation and they even pay their tithes and perhaps even sing in the choir or they watch and stream it online and they think that they're going to find God simply because they participate in some of the church's programs. But can I tell you, God is not in the rituals apart from the relationship with his son. Not just Christianity, but even in Judaism. There are a lot of people trying to find God in Jewish tradition and religious activities. They, they think that if I can go to the synagogue, if I recite the Torah, if I keep the feasts and the festivals and I keep Shabbat, then I'll find God in my religious activity. But God is not in the religious activity devoid of a personal relationship. Even in Islam, many people are trying to find God in religious activities. If they recite the Quran, if they fast during Ramadan, if they pray five times a day, then maybe they'll find God in the midst of their religious activity. But can I tell you, God is not in our religious activity that is devoid from a personal relationship. You can pray 50 times a day. You can do 150 Hail Marys. But if you don't have a personal relationship with God, then your religion is a grave and God is not in the grave. Let me prove what I'm talking about. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus is rebuking uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. This is what he says. He says, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. On the outside, you look like whitewashed tombs, but on the inside, you're full of dead man's bones. What a scathing rebuke. He's saying on the outside, you look like everything is clean, like everything is good, that God is a part of your religious activity. But on the inside, it's a picture of death and decay and dry bones. It's a tomb. It's a grave. And God is not in the grave. Scribes and the Pharisees were religious leaders in the time of Jesus. And the people were looking to them to find God. But they didn't even believe in God because their God was not Jesus Christ. They had religion. They had ritual. They tried to keep the law of Moses, but they were blind because they couldn't see Jesus as their only way to get to the Father. I hear what you're saying. You're saying, well, if that's the case, preacher, tell me how I can have a personal relationship with God. I'm so glad you asked. Jesus said it like this in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. If you want to have a personal relationship with God, you have to put your faith in God's Son. You have to believe that Jesus died for my sins and God raised him from the dead. And if you put your faith in Jesus alone for salvation, then God will adopt you. He'll be your father. You'll be his son. The Holy Spirit will dwell in you and you have the security of salvation forever. Once you have a relationship, now you can do religion that's meaningful. Once you have a relationship, now you can do religion and God can be in the religion because he's already in the relationship. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. I don't want to just have religion. I want to have a relationship because even when religion goes away, my relationship will last forever. One grave site where people are looking for God and they leave discouraged is the grave. That, that's what's happening in our text. Mary comes to the grave and she's looking, looking for Jesus, looking for God. But instead of finding God, 
finds a tomb where God's not present. And she's discouraged because she wants to know where they have laid the body. She's looking for, for, for an answer, but her religion can't help her. She doesn't understand at this point about the resurrection of Jesus. She's heard about it, but it has not really comprehended yet. And so she's discouraged. She's crying, looking for her God. The second grave site or the second place that many people look for God and can never find him is in the bottom of a box. In the bottom of a box. Listen, we put God in a box all of the time. We try to put God in a compartment. Um, a place where we can file him away and when we need him we go get him but when we don't need him we put him in a box somewhere in the corner when money is flowing and when your health is intact and when your relationships are good we act like we don't need God so we put him in a box somewhere amen and then now that all hell is breaking loose in our life we want to go find the box and try to get God out of the box but God doesn't dwell in the box because God can't be confined nor contained in this God is a big God and he is not in the boxes we try to put him in even a box called the Ark of the Covenant people thought that the totality was God of God was confined to a box no God allowed his glory and his spirit to be in and around the Ark of the Covenant but God is bigger than the box God is greater than the box. God cannot be confined to the box. Listen, I'm in the text. Mary um, is coming to the grave and she's expecting to find Jesus at the bottom of the box. She's expecting to see his body dead at the bottom of the box. But the body is not in the box because the body is standing on resurrection ground. She's looking for the right person in the wrong place. Wait a minute. We, we try to put God in the box and the tragedy is we put God not only in the box but we put him in the bottom of the box. We put anything and everything above. God listen when if, if you try to say that you understand all of God you've put God in the box. And God is not in that box. If if you understand everything about God you, you're saying God is in your box but God is not in that box. If if, if, if you only uh, treat God uh, to your understanding, then you are saying that God is as big as my understanding. You have placed God in your box. If you only trust God according to your tradition or according to your limited information, you have placed God in a box. And when you go looking for God in that box, I promise you God won't be there because your box is a grave and God is is not in the grave. Can I tell you, God is a big God. He's bigger than we can understand. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways, as high as the heavens are above the earth. That's how far his thoughts are from our thoughts, his ways from our ways. When we put God in a box, we will never find him because God is not in our box. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to leave you with bad news. I just want to tell it like it is that there are a lot of people who are looking for God and like Mary, they are weeping and discouraged and frustrated because in their time of need, they need to hear a word from God. They need some hope and some comfort and some encouragement. The problem is they're looking for God in the wrong place. But can I leave you with some good news? I told you before what Jeremiah 29, 13 says, that if you seek God with your whole heart, you will find him. And so even in our text, while Mary can't find God, guess what? God found Mary. See, when you can't find God, the good news is that he will find you. I'm, I'm in the text. And so Mary looks in the tomb, doesn't see Jesus, but she sees two angels. And they say, why are you weeping? And then... She notices a man standing. She's expecting a man, someone at the bottom of the box, but then she sees a man standing, and then she doesn't recognize that it's Jesus. She thinks it's the gardener and asks him, um, 
if you have moved his body, tell me where it is because I, I need to get the body. Do you see her determination? She's really trying to get to God, but the problem is, man, she can't find God. And so Jesus says, um, Mary calls her name and she recognizes his voice and then says, Rabboni? Oh, Rabbi? Um, here's the good news. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice because she had a relationship with God, even though she didn't understand all of the details of the relationship. When God called her name, she answered. She recognized her Savior's voice. And the good news of the gospel, if you've been looking for God and you've yet to find him, the good news is he will find you. If you let him, if, if you're willing to respond to the truth, if you're willing to respond to his love, then even when you can't find him, he will find you. And here's the good thing about the text that uh, he calls Mary by her name. Um, and it's a good thing when God knows your name because you want your name to be in the Lamb's book of life. Here's the tragedy, the tragedy and the travesty is that in Matthew 7, 22, many come to Jesus in that day and say, uh, Lord, Lord, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I prophesy? Didn't I do religious things in your name? And he will say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. I don't know your name, but when you seek God with your whole heart and find him, it's because he has revealed himself to you. And God has revealed himself to humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. There's no other personal revelation of God more perfect and more complete than the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus he is the way, the truth. In the life, no man comes to the Father but by the Son and the good news of resurrection that if you place your faith in Jesus alone, then you, like Jesus, can arise from the dead and experience eternity with God, with a glorified body. I'm headed to my seat, but can I tell you one more thing? After Jesus calls his calls Mary's name, he gives her two commands. The first command was not to touch him because he had yet not yet ascended to the Father, but the second command was to go and tell his brothers about the resurrection and that he was going to ascend. And can I leave you to the saints who already have a relationship with God, to the saints who already saved. May, may I suggest to you that the command of the resurrection, the great commission is that we got to go and tell somebody that Jesus has risen from the dead. Can I encourage somebody who may be worried about that tomorrow when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you don't have to worry about tomorrow because he's got authority of tomorrow in his hands. The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that on Good Friday he died for a wretch like me and for a wretch like you. But the good news, on the third day, resurrection morning, Jesus got up from the grave because God is not in the grave. And if you want to experience salvation, if you want to experience joy, if you want to experience eternal life, you got to put your faith in the only one that can do it. That's Jesus the Christ. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah.